Hey, if you're a diehard fan of Taylor Swift, like our very own Maria, the writer behind this script, then you know firsthand what unfolded during the sale of Taylor Swift's era tour tickets last year. However, if you don't know, well, you're in for a combination roast and educational post on how Ticketmaster botched ticket sales so badly that not only did it fail Swifties, Taylor Swift herself, but it also got the Congress to look into antitrust laws as well. And not only that, but it failed on every single marketing lesson. And that one, that one really bothers us. Starting off with how Ticketmaster's verified fan program would have worked in Ticketmaster's wildest dreams. First, let's start with what Ticketmaster thought was going to happen. Taylor Swift wanted to make sure that tickets got into the hands of actual Swifties and not scalpers or bots. Ticketmaster's solution to this problem, as it has been for other artists, is their verified fan program, complete with staggered sales based on venue time zones. Swifties submitted the information to Ticketmaster, then received an email with the concert selection as well as confirmation they were verified. This did not guarantee that they could participate in the verified fan pre-sale events, however. Demand was too high though. But Ticketmaster knew that was coming and they had a plan for it. On November 14th, the night before the pre-sale, Swifties would be randomly selected from the verified fan pool. Then they would be notified via email and then later via text message containing 1. The concert date for which they were eligible to shop 2. A shopping link and 3. A unique code required for access. Additionally, Swifties who previously purchased tickets for the cancelled for COVID Lovers Fest were to receive a boost, as were Swifties who received an email for being loyal fans. Keep this in mind for later on in the video. Now here's the super short version of how Ticketmaster imagined pre-sale day would go. Ticketmaster would text Swifties on the pre-sale day with login information. This would be done 30 minutes before 10am local venue time. This would give Swifties a chance to update their payment information and make sure they were logged in without issue. Once in the waiting room, fans would see a bar across the screen indicating how many fans were ahead of them in line. When they reached the front of the line, they would be placed in the ticketing room. This showed them the venue layout and the ability to pick seats. Fans would have 30 minutes in this room, but once tickets were added to their basket, they would only have 8 minutes to check out before the tickets were released back into the pool. This process was to repeat for every time zone of the verified fan pre-sale portion of the day. And then afterwards, the Capital One pre-sale was to go live at 2pm Eastern on the same day. In summary, sales would go like this. 10am Eastern time zone, 11am Central time zone, 12pm Mountain time zone, 1pm Pacific time zone, 2pm Capital One pre-sale. This is how it was supposed to go, but Swifties know that didn't turn out that way. We remember what actually happened all too well. Because we knew you were troubled Ticketmaster, and the missing codes proved it. The verified fan pre-sale went so badly that Swifty started calling it the Great War. Not like the Great War of World War 1 or World War 2, but the Great War of buying Swifty tickets. But even the day before the Great War was nerve-wracking. Verified fans selected for the pre-sale were supposed to receive emails that day. Why was that nerve-wracking? Because the emails went out in batches, but the corresponding text messages were not being sent in the same batch. So around 1pm Eastern Time, emails started going out, and text messages with the links and codes followed. The Swifty Discord, which Maria was in, lit up like a Christmas tree. Some people received that emails and codes, others were only getting emails, and others were just getting codes, and some just got nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Maria received her email, but no codes. Hours passed, and still nothing, and at this point it was getting late for her, and people in her Discord said this was not a new problem, as previous Ticketmaster verified fan programs have had the same issues. So you can see exactly why people would be thinking, am I going to be one of those unlucky ones? Which is why the delayed delivery of emails and text messages codes pointlessly tortured Swifties. As the evening progressed, Maria slowly morphed into a blob of a human being. She was 90% anxiety and 10% human. Dibble, double, shibble, shubble, glibble, glab, and began questioning if the anxiety she felt as though my life depended on receiving a single text was how Zoomers felt all the time. It wasn't exactly a shiny moment for her, but Ticketmaster put her out of her misery seven hours later. She received a text message from a random number. It was the random number. She finally had her codes. It seemed like it'd be the end of her problems, but she should have known it wouldn't be. The elation she was feeling now would soon be replaced by more anxiety. She would soon have to reach in the depths of her soul for courage and the will to press on in what would be later be called the Swifty Hunger Games. The Great War, or Ticketmaster's chaotic drawn out pre-sales left fans feeling burnt. Even though she didn't have to be on the computer until 10.30 Eastern, she wanted to get a jump start to make sure she could access her Ticketmaster account. So colour her surprise when she couldn't even get access to the Ticketmaster website. The only way she could access the page was through a stroke of luck, and she had that. The previous day, she emailed herself the link that was texted by Ticketmaster. 
When she clicked that link, it brought up Ticketmaster, and by some soft kiss of the Swifty gods, her Ticketmaster account automatically logged her in. The screen said she was in the waiting room, and that it would automatically refresh and place her in line once the appropriate time came. This made her quickly realise that she couldn't do anything with to her internet, and therefore something like this would happen if something went wrong with it. The internet! And then she later found out that the East Coast Swifties were also warning others about getting booted from the system. Thousands upon thousands of East Coast Swifties were still waiting in line. Central was about to open up, and if you know Taylor Swift, you know that seeing her in Nashville is a high demand location. Which brings me to the fact that Ticketmaster dropped Swifties onto a vague screen saying 2,000 plus people ahead of you. Open the gates! So the gates of Central opened up, the screen moved her to the queue, and Tommy Butterfly started flying around. She had no idea what to expect, but was sure she was going to be ready. I'm ready! She had her codes copied to her clipboard to enter to get in line, except Ticketmaster didn't request them. That couldn't be good, right? Well, it's okay. She did have the boost from Taylor Nation, but she couldn't expect that to put her right in front of the line, of course. After all, there were all the Love Fest Swifties who needed to get priority because they bought tickets for a tour cancelled by COVID. But then she started seeing some Discord messages about people getting seats fast who did not have either Taylor Nation boosts or Love Fest boosts for that matter. And then she saw messages from people who had Love Fest and didn't even get a code. Then more and more messages arrived from the East Coast saying they were getting booted out of the ticketing room. People with legitimate codes ran into errors, others waited hours only to get sent back to the line instead of the ticketing room. Then Ticketmaster randomly stopped the queue for an indeterminate amount of time. Without warning, Ticketmaster paused the entire ticketing process. And as a Swifty, waiting in line for hours felt like a dead by but you imagine having to sit in a chair for seven hours straight, feeling like you are playing Russian roulette if you dare go to the bathroom. Ultimately, Ticketmaster screwed up so badly that you could only get Taylor Swift tickets if you could afford to spend hours waiting on the computer. Hours went by. She tried getting non-rated work done by cleaning her office, and she learned how to see what her place was in line by viewing the source code on the page. In the end, the Capital One pre-sale that was supposed to also happen that day was ultimately pushed back to the next day, as well as the Pacific Coast venue sales were also pushed back to the afternoon. Ticketmaster then just unpaused the queue without warning after two hours. Oh my god, okay, it's happening! People started sending screenshots of their loading bar, the East had loads of Swifties bemoaning the fact that they were still stuck in line, and then finally, it happened. She was next in line, but was also terrified because her new Swifty friends had been booted back in the line previously. So she held her breath as the screen refreshed to put her in the ticketing room, and then BAM, she was in. <laughs> Though the sale started at 11am Eastern, she did not even get into the ticketing room until 4.30 Eastern. And as she sat staring at the stadium seating chart, trying to make her selection, the seats were blinking like Christmas lights. The same tickets were appearing and then disappearing over and over again. Oh the 7 minute ticket hold was not working the way it was supposed to. It was utter madness. So she grabbed her tickets, paid, and then went back to send screenshots to the Discord, and then in a matter of 15 minutes, she watched the stadium sell out. And I think there's been a glitch, because Ticketmaster sold out all the general sale tickets before it was supposed to. The next day was a Capital One pre-sale event, and that pre-sale sold out even faster. And then, here's the catch. After the Capital One pre-sale, Ticketmaster cancelled general sales. They were out of tickets, guys, screwing over everyone who wasn't part of some kind of special program. And Swifties were shooketh. Only a certain percentage of the tickets were to be sold during the two pre-sale events combined. A whole other set of tickets were supposed to be available for general sale that Friday, so how could they possibly be sold out? There must have been a glitch or some serious shady business. Because tickets were already popping up on resale websites with one ticket in Houston going for $22,000! And because of this, it was even reported in the news warning people to not get scammed. Hackettstown Police Department investigated a report of a scam and found someone posted they had Taylor Swift tickets for sale. If you were lucky enough to score tickets, you were advised to change your Ticketmaster password. Hackers targeted accounts with Taylor Swift tickets. Then in the afternoon, Taylor Swift made her statement. It was short, it was clear, and went something like this. Draw the cat, eyes sharp enough to kill a man. And the only reason they can get away with this is because Ticketmaster is a de facto monopoly. Music fans have dealt with crummy ticketing experiences for years. 
it was almost a rite of passage to attend a high demand concert. Ariana Grande, Olivia Rodrigo, and Harry Styles also had a historically intense ticketing experience. Pearl Jam even fought them in court all the way back in 1995. Pearl Jam played Capitol Hill on Thursday as guitarist Stone Gossard and bassist Jeff Ammett were at the House of Representatives to begin three hours of testimony about Ticketmaster. So why now? Why a Ticketmaster and Live Nation in hot water? Taylor Swift has grabbed the spotlight for smashing records and fighting the good fight against big conglomerates. And no longer is she letting herself be pushed around. And if she gets weary, she has millions of Swifties there to back her up. So has taken an artist like Taylor Swift, who had a large enough and dedicated enough fan base spanning multiple generations to get the attention of the Tennessee Attorney General, North Carolina Attorney General, the Justice Department, and Congress itself to finally look into the Live Nation and Ticketmaster monopoly. Ticketmaster has so much power that a superstar who took her music back from her own record label didn't have any viable alternative for ticketing. Based on Swift's statement, it was clear that she was forced into working with Live Nation slash Ticketmaster due to our lack of competition in the industry. Live Nation controls access to most major music venues in the United States alongside Ticketmaster as they merge in 2010, furthering their growth together. If I have two compatible monsters on the field, I can use my polymerization card and fuse them. Which brings me to Ticketmaster versus the four P's and C's of marketing. One of the first things you'll learn about in marketing class is the four P's and C's of marketing. Ticketmaster and Live Nation a long time ago understood these lessons, but at some point they forgot them. So let's look at how their monopoly status makes them exempt from the most basic marketing rules. Starting off with promotion. In marketing, promotion is every method of communication that you use to inform people about a product or service. Ticketmaster, faced with a task of promotion, should have had an easy ride. After all, we're talking about Taylor Swift here, whose fan base possesses an otherworldly connection that defines explanation. It's as if they possess a secret network of Swifty telepaths, effortlessly spreading the word without the need for traditional marketing. I am assuming direct control. Then we have place. Place typically refers to how easily customers can access a company and how convenient it is to buy from them. Ticketmaster is a virtual ticketing system, so their place is their website and virtual waiting rooms. It's also the place they screwed up the worst. Through the verified fan program, Ticketmaster tried to gauge how much traffic would be getting on their website on November the 15th, but their service could not handle the traffic surge and they had to pause the pre-sale process. And when the sales finally kicked off, customers found themselves in a virtual labyrinth of confusion. Codes went missing, emails went missing, it just morphed into a non-central gibberish. Now we go into product, where things should have been easy. They had all the tickets, but managed to sell them all during the verified fan and Capital One pre-sale events, saying to all the general fans, oops, sorry, we didn't mean to do that. But really, it's a puzzle that leaves us questioning the very fabric of reality when you literally own all the tickets. It's a total fabrication. Then finally, price. Price is another part of marketing. Too high and people won't buy. Too low and you won't make enough profit. The price itself sets expectations for the quality of the product. But there's more to pricing than meets the eye. Behind the scenes, fees and hidden costs come into play. For concerts, this includes artist fees, production expenses, and venue-related expenditures. It's a complex puzzle where every element must be considered. Now let's dive into Ticketmaster's intriguing strategies. Enter the highway robbery system, also known as dynamic pricing and platinum tickets. Thankfully, Taylor Swift protected her fans from these tactics, though high-priced VIP packages still emerged. Dynamic pricing, first of all, is a clever yet controversial practice, allowing ticket prices to fluctuate based on demand. In Bruce Springsteen's case, floor seats periodically surged to several thousand dollars each, and people bought them. Meanwhile, platinum tickets masquerade as exclusive experiences, but in reality, they offer little beyond a higher price tag. So we must commend Taylor Swift for a stand against these things, preventing Ticketmaster from faltering in this aspect. However, due to the general sale blunder, it did cause an insane rise for the cost of these tickets. Now we get into the four C's of marketing, starting off with customers. In marketing, you need to understand that customer satisfaction reigns supreme. It's all about understanding your audience, meeting their desires, and building unwavering loyalty in the process. Ticketmaster took a detour from this path by monopolizing the market, leaving customers with no viable alternatives. Swifty and Taylor Swift herself were let down by Ticketmaster's failure to cater to their needs. The night of the Capital One pre-sale, a chairman for Nihilation was interviewed on CNBC, and according to him, It's a function of the massive demand that Taylor Swift has. The site was supposed to be opened up for 1.5 million verified Taylor Swift fans. Uh, we had 14 million people hit the site, including bots. 
You sure about that? That's why? They only got away with this because they're a monopoly. Taylor Swift had her hands tied, watching Ticketmaster play the fiddle while the Swifties burned. Then we get into cost. Cost is not just about the monetary expenses, but also encompasses the intangible costs that customers bear. Ticketmaster not only charge exorbitant prices for tickets, but also rob fans of their valuable time. The intangible cost of wasting an entire day in a futile attempt to secure tickets can be even more burdensome. Now, Ticketmaster will face the consequences of their actions, paying both tangible and intangible costs as legal battles unfold. You done messed up, AA Ron! Now we get into convenience. Generally speaking, Ticketmaster is built upon convenience. Fans don't have to wait outside a ticketing office or be on a phone line for hours. But when it came to the era's tour, Ticketmaster managed to make something worse than actually going somewhere to buy a ticket. Now I'm not sure about you, but sitting at a computer for 7 hours is not convenient at all. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Sure, desk jobs involve sitting at a computer all day, but at least I'm getting paid for that. <sighs> but sadly, it's a volunteer job in the Swifty Hunger Games. Waiting for the codes originally, and then waiting again when they decided to pause the system. And then when they unpause, you just gotta anxiously stare at the screen, seeing that there's 2,000 plus ahead of you, which might actually just be a veil of an illusion, and there's 30,000 people ahead of you. So did Ticketmaster make purchasing tickets convenient? Hell no. Then finally, communication. Initially, Ticketmaster actually did a good job here. They clearly outlined the steps of how to become a verified fan, and even set the expectations that every verified fan would receive a code. It's a harsh truth, but supply and demand exist, and Ticketmaster did a good job telling people that. What they then tanked was everything thereafter. Ticketmaster's Twitter response to the direct message became a chaotic mishmash of conflicting information. Statements varied from the general sale being postponed to no tickets being available, and even claims of 800,000 tickets in circulation. Then there were reports of stadium employees attempted to sell tickets at scalper prices during the ticket processing hiatus, which all added to the confusion. Whereas others have been told in that the stadium have no idea how many tickets there are and only know the part what the public knows. The reason for this pause is still up for debate. Was it due to Ticketmaster not actually inputting all the codes into the system? Was it because the servers are overloaded? Both? We may never know the truth. Which brings us to our final thoughts. The only thing we really know for sure is that we're still watching this whole saga unfold in real time. But here's a quick update since the original script was written back in December. It comes from the LA Times. The FTC has in recent years waged a quiet campaign against junk fees or fees that the agency considers unfair and deceptive. Critics of Ticketmaster's policies argue that fees added to the end of sales qualify as both. Although a Live Nation's announcement to reduce junk fees that is, is good news for consumer advocates. However, lawmakers need to ensure that the company keeps its promises. In short, the regulatory arm of the US government is starting to crack down on the price gorging of Live Nation and Ticketmaster. We'll see what happens with that over the next few years, as well as what happens regarding their monopoly status and bad customer experience. But even though it's not over, one thing's for sure, if you're running a company, think about the kind of experience you're providing. Think about the 4 C's and 4 P's, and for the love of God, do the exact opposite of what Ticketmaster would do. Well, you've got to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button to support us. Smash your brain against the subscribe button to be extra awesome. Ring that bell to be notified whenever we put new content out.